So I had a thought that it would be fun to model um, a ball rolling down a hill that's purposely off-center. So if we put the center, let's say we have an extra mass here. I'll call it M. Um, and so I'm actually interested in finding those times when it's kind of like how I've drawn it here, that there would be, it would just sit there, right? And because there would be no torque around this pivot point because the mass would be directly above the contact point. And then I'm curious about like starting starting it elsewhere, like maybe you start it with this mass, I don't know, over here or something, so it for sure will roll. Will it always just roll past here and oscillate? Um, or or what will happen there? So I think to model this, you know, usual Lagrangian stuff, um, the kinetic energy is gonna be one half um, I theta dot squared. So we're gonna measure some, you know, theta. And um, plus one half m, uh, the lowercase m, x dot squared plus y dot squared, right, the kinetic energy of this guy. Well, and that one is always going to be um, the coordinates of the center of mass of this, right, so that's um, some, some location, right, so if this angle here is, um, I won't use theta, how about alpha, right, if that angle is alpha, then um, if we were to measure um, this distance here, I'm trying to decide, do I measure this distance here and call it, I don't know, A or something? Um, we've got some x location of the center of the ball and a y location of the center of the ball. We know that, um, that they're related by the angle alpha here. And so what we want to do is be able to express x dot and y dot in terms of the, you know, all of these other things, right? So we know that um, a is a particularly useful variable here. So if we say a is zero down here, and as you move up a, we know that x um, center is just going to be um, a uh, cosine alpha and we know that y center is going to be a sine alpha. Um, and we know that the center of the ball is going to be um, from that location up a little bit, right? Um, but interestingly, this distance is always the same, so we could be saying that we're measuring a here, and we can just um, pretend that our zero line is wherever it happens to be so that we're actually measuring to that spot. I sort of like that because then x is just x center plus um, some uh, radius out. So this distance right here, we're going to call r. Um, and we'll call this um, cosine theta plus what I'll call beta. So that's the initial, initial um, you know, angle of where the, where the, uh, you know, where you set it. Um, and then y is going to be yc plus r sine uh, theta plus beta. Cool. Well, once we have that, what are our actual variables here? It seems like we have a, right now it kind of looks like we have a uh, theta and that's about it, but honestly, A and theta are related, right? So A is going to be capital R, so that'll be uh, this radius here, capital R times theta, right? So from some initial theta, it's redefining where the, the zero of A is, but I don't really care about that. So in fact, we have a single variable problem, just theta. So if I can put this into, um, into the Wolfram engine, I think I can get the kinetic energy. What's the potential energy going to be? Let's see, potential energy is going to be, um, let's see, it's gonna be mg, I guess, capital M, the mass of the, of the wheel, let's call it, times um, its y, plus an additional lowercase mg, the, the oh, this would be y center, uh, MGY. Yeah, that's kinetic and potential energy. So, yeah, okay, so let's um, shift over to uh, the Wolfram engine and let's launch a new Wolfram uh, document. 
and let's see if we can do this here. Um, I'll keep the line items on there. So um, let's see, we need that x center, no, a is a function of t, colon equals, um, oh, we're going to need some constants, r equals 1, uh, r equals 0 0.8. Uh, capital M is going to be what? Lowercase m is going to be, I don't know, also 1, so an additional mass there. G is going to be 9.8, and alpha is going to be, how about 30 degrees? So um, 30 times pi divided by 180 to get it in radians. That's all the constants that we need, and then we need to say that, let's see, the center is a function of time is a of t times the cosine of alpha. And we need that the center uh, y is going to be a of t uh, times the sine of alpha. And I guess above that, it doesn't really matter that we put it above. We know that a of t is just going to be um, big R times theta. Cool. Uh, of t, that's a function of time. In fact, that's our only function that we're going to solve for. Then we know that x of t is, what did we say? It's x c of t uh, plus r times the cosine of uh, theta plus beta. So we have to define uh, beta. So let's come up here and let's say beta is 0 to start out with. I think what that's going to do is set everything over to the horizontal. Oops, <laughs> I didn't mean to make it a function. Equals 0. Cool. And um, awesome. And then y of t is going to be y center of t plus r times the sine of theta of t plus beta. So that's that's pretty much what we wrote. Awesome. So we know those things. Um, oh, we need the moment of inertia. So what I'll call moment of inertia. You can't use capital I in the Wolfram engine. So moment of inertia is going to be um, 2 fifths m r squared. That's the moment of inertia of a ball. Oh, that's a ball, not a hoop. Ah, it doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll imagine a ball that has an extra mass uh, put inside of it. Um, yeah, Then so then the kinetic energy is going to be 1 half moment of inertia times theta prime of t squared and an additional 1 half lowercase m um, x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. That's basically what we had written. Awesome. Uh, let's check it, make sure. So we said, uh, yeah, that's what we have. We have this, we have this, we have this, we have this. Yeah, I guess we have everything. Sweet. So that's the, the kinetic energy, that the potential energy we said is going to be big M times G times YC of T uh, plus lowercase m times G times Y of T. That seems cool. Um, and now, let's see, um, we only have theta, right? So let me say L equals KE minus PE. Let's take a look at it. Everything should just have thetas in it, thetas and theta primes. Why is there a square root of 3? Why in the world would there be a square? Oh, it's because we did exactly 30 degrees here. I bet you anything. All right, that's cool. And then we're going to say sol equals first and d solve the usual business of what do we want? We want the derivative of L with respect to theta minus the derivative of L with respect to theta prime. Oops. And then an additional time derivative, and we'll say equals 0. Then we also need to say that theta at 0, let's start it at 0. And let's say that theta prime at 0 starts at 0. That's it. Solve for theta, please. And let's just go out a tiny little bit of time, t 0 to 1. Let's just see if it fails. Worked. Things rolling. All right, let's go out, I don't know, 10 seconds or something, make sure it rolls far enough. Yeah, just rolls. OK. And so then if we do a parametric plot of two things, let's do uh, uh, the center. That's all. And the weirdo ball that should kind of roll around in circles, I guess, or spiral around, or something. Let's see. Slash dot solve. As uh, t goes from zero to ten, um, it's it is wrapping around. Boy, ten seconds is way too long. Let's go back to just one second. In fact, let me just call this t max. So we'll just go out one second, and we'll just integrate out to. 
to max. Ah, not quite far enough. Let's go three seconds. No, two seconds, because it's accelerating. So it's just going faster and faster. Okay. Um, so something's funky. Why, I, why is it drawing it below the line? That doesn't make any sense at all. R is 0 0.8. Capital R is 1. Oh, yeah, no, that's the center. That's absolutely the center of the ball. And this is just kind of rolling around. Um, starts over here. It's going downhill. No, that's not rolling the right way. So I've got a sign mistake somewhere. And I think it's because when I drew my picture. Oops, hang on. Got to wake up my other device here. Wake up. When I drew my picture. I drew everything to the left here, so let's imagine it was to the right. I actually think we need a negative sign somewhere. Um, actually, I think that if we define x as a negative, this x, this x is a negative. So this, this xc is going to the left. That might do the trick. Let's see what that does. Let's have x c b negative. I don't know. We'll see. Now let's see what we get. There she blows. So it's rolling downhill. It's rolling downhill. So we would have expected at some point it just would it wouldn't really be able to roll. Um, so the question is, is there some if I put it down to an angle of zero, for example, it should still roll because it's an off-centered thing. So if I make it the angle be zero, yeah, still rolling. It just barely rolls. Whoa, that is super weird. Let me do plot range all so it's for sure plotting everything. What in the heck? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, because it starts over to the right. It comes down, dips over, and goes down. But the X, F, C, it just, this thing's just moving to the right. Yeah, it rolls down and over. And so it, it this would be its happy spot right about here. My guess is that's when, uh, could it be? That's when pi, time is pi over two it looks like pi over two but that may be just speculation here this is super super interesting so if you set this ball let me let me do some things where i can actually um you know make some funny uh, make it look nice so let's see a single frame what do i want to draw which is a function of time what do i want to draw here so i want to draw so show graphics um let's see i want a circle which is at x c of t y c of t so that's all and it's radius r and then i want after a circle i would like another smaller circle let's do a circle actually let's yeah let's do a smaller circle that's at oh, why can't i spell that's at x of t, y of t. So that's the that's the other ball. Select dot all, and its radius should be how about I don't know r over ten. That's a small little additional weight. So those are both going to be black. Let me change this to being a disk. So that's and let me make it green. Yeah, that should work. So that's going to show me. Um, yeah. It'd be nice to show the line too, wouldn't it? Okay, what would the line be? Um, hmm. I guess we need a line that goes from 0, 0 to um, minus cosine, I don't know, 10 times? How far should we go? How about 10? times minus 10 times the cosine of alpha to 10 times the sine of alpha. But what's wrong? 
what's weird about that is that'll go from 0, 0 to negative 10, and this actually went positive. This rolls down. Oh, okay, so we need to go not from 0, 0. It's going to roll downhill. So we actually need this to be... Hmm. This is fascinating. Let's go 10, cosine alpha, 10, sine minus 10, sine alpha. I don't know if that's going to work. We're going to give it a shot. OK. So then after we do the graphics, we're going to do plot range. Let's just do plot range, I don't know, 10, so we can see the whole thing. OK. And then let's do frame 0, see if it's working. Oh. The line is in the wrong place. Oh, crap. Uh, this line is really in the wrong place. Cut was supposed to be inside of here, comma, paste, with an additional shut down there. And that's shutting down my line. That's shutting down my graphics. I want to get rid of this and try that. OK. Nope. Mad, I missed something here. So this is shutting down the list of graphics. So it finishes the line. Yep. There's two commas. That's the problem. And now let's see frame 0. Oh, it's still green. Let's make this be black. OK. So now it's going to roll around. I mean, we're not drawing the line. Um, we need to shift the line down to be at the bottom, but that was the, the sacrifice that I made uh, before. <laughs> so now let's do a movie here. So if I do um, frames equals table frame t, uh, as t goes from 0 to t max uh, in t max over I don't know, 100 steps. And then let's list animate frames. OK. So that's going to take a little while, because it has to make 100 uh, frames. But we ought to see it roll around anyways. Um, so let's see here. Just to make my other point clear, when, we, when I decided that um, instead of having x and y describe this point, instead of having it describe this point, this shift I'm just drawing the ground there. It didn't affect anything. Remember, all that matter are differences. So it just lifted everybody's uh, potential energy up, and it doesn't affect this crap at all. So that's what's going on there. All right, here we go. Oh, it rolled back and forth. It actually rolled back and forth. Ah, cool. OK. So now if we go back to, I don't know, 30 degrees. Uh, where's that? Let's do 30 degrees. Then we can take a look and better understand what's going on here. So that's done. Let's take a look at the parametric plot. It just keeps rolling downhill. So if I um, execute this again, it'll take a little while to do. Um, but again, while we're waiting, just make sure we understand everything that we did. We haven't really played with the beta stuff yet. So we could actually choose to have beta be straight up and down. So that would be a beta of pi over 2. And then that thing wouldn't roll. I'm always just starting it over here to the right horizontally, which is how the graphics is always being drawn. It's still running. You can see it's still running here with this star. So basically, Mathematica just does all the frames and then shows them all together. So let's see. Is it rolling funny? Vroom. Vroom. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So let's roll it uphill first. So if I say theta prime is negative, I don't know, 1. Well, before I do that, let me plot theta to understand just how fast it gets going. So plot theta prime t slash dot solve as t goes from 0 to t max. So theta prime, oh, it's always negative. What? Those are negative thetas? Those are negative thetas. That, that, what? Is it just because of my sign convention that I decided to do that? Fine, I'll put a positive theta in here. Sorry, I've got a weirdo sign convention going on here. Let me put a positive theta right here. Well, well, how big were those thetas? 
Uh, okay, so let's make it maybe five. Um, make this positive five. Let's execute that. Goes uphill then downhill apparently. Uphill then downhill. Let's let's see that. So I'll execute this. Why do I have another sign mistake? So what I did is put a negative sign there. When theta goes positive. Oh my god, why did I draw my drawing like this? Ugh, stupid sign mistakes. All right, let's see. Is it done yet? Nope, still running. You can see the little dot here. Okay, so it rolls uphill. Rolls uphill and then rolls downhill. It's like, I want to fall further. That's super fascinating. In fact, you can tell right at the top of the motion, it is almost perfectly balanced there. It is almost perfectly balanced right there because the green dot is almost directly below the pivot point, which would be right. Um, in other words, the green dot is almost straight down. Green dot is almost straight down there. Let's push it harder. Let's push it harder uphill. So that would be, uh, how about uh, seven? Let's take a look. Yep, definitely rolls past it. Okay, well, we'll take a look at that animation then. So in the Mathematica interface, you immediately start seeing things if you use a manipulate command. It just starts, it just, it calculates whatever, whichever frame you're looking at. But when you try to run the movie, it takes a little while. Here, we're calculating all the frames because we're using the Wolfram engine. So it rolls uphill, and then it rolls downhill. And it's just swinging through that, swinging through that little spot. So if I put some friction in here, would it ever come to a stop? Man, that's super interesting. Super, super interesting. I guess I'm not sure. All right, I guess that's a good enough place to stop. I think this stuff is really interesting.